what I'm doing today. As you can see, I've been playing a little bit. It's kind of messy. But um, I'm just working with different ways to put the paint to get different textures using uh, brushes and different things to put the paint onto the gel plate instead of just rolling it on always. So I'm just going to practice because I've got some um, stencil projects I'm working with and one of the stencils is a cactus and I'm actually started this by trying to figure out how I could uh, do the cactus part of the stencil and then um, put something down to to get the look of the spikes if not you know drawing out the spikes or having to do another stencil with the spikes so that's what got me got the idea so I'm just gonna play around with different things um, working with painting onto them I'm probably gonna roll out a little bit of paint to start and just see what I get from this like I said, I was interested in different ways that I could put the paint on the on the plate without, other than just rolling it on the plate, which is what you usually do. And I know it's what I usually do. It's my fallback. But there are other ways to do this. Just put a little bit of yellow on. And as you can see, I've been working with really dark colors, but I'm going to leave them on there. All right, now I have different things, um, and what I'm going to do is paint on the things, like this right here. I'm going to put some paint down, and see what kind of impressions I get from painting on it, and then putting it down. I really didn't want that color. Here we go, we'll have a peach color. Just to see what happens. This is the bottom of a cookie tin. You know, plastic tin you get. Just going to paint a few and then press them down and see what happens. See what kind of impressions I get. If it makes interesting marks or... But it won't be like rolling it out and stamping it on or... See how that looks. I'll pull up a bunch of this paper here. And I'm just going to keep pulling them up to see what kind of impressions I'm getting from painting it on instead of. That's not too impressive. Well, we could have painted it a little darker. Let's do another coat. Pick a different area. Now you could actually just push it down right onto the paper too, but I wanted to get the secondary coming off the plate look. Well, that's not too bad. Let's do some more and see what what comes of it. Now we got this thing here. Let's see what happens when you just paint on this and then put it down there. Alright, let's see what kind of impression I got. Oh, I like that. It has a kind of undulating look to it. What else have we got that we could hang on? Now, I love using crinkled foil, but I've never, I don't think I've ever actually painted on it and then used it. That's a dark green. Get it on thick. Get a mix of both of them. Well, let's see what that looks like. I think that might come close to what I need for my cactus. Oh, look at that. Let's do some more of that. That does have a nice vegetation look to it. And I'm going to wet the brush a little. See if we can get a little bit 
runnier paint on there. I think I may have hit it. All right. That'll stay juicy just a little bit longer. Now you see this effect could be like trees in the distance. You could sponge them down in, in a light green and then go over them with this to get the look of leaves when you're doing a landscape. Look at that. That is a cool texture. Seaweed or grass or... Well, that's going to work. Let's try it with something weird like a doily. We can use this one to me. I've really never done this before. Every once in a while I just like to play Kind of outside the box. Now let's pull up what we got under there. Which might be a little dry since I mopped it up. Oh, well, now that's interesting too. It's a little more organized looking than this. Either way, it's very nice. It does look like vegetation. So if I need vegetation, I know two ways I can go with it. I clean my brush. And also, I came out here to play with this. I found this at Goodwill, 99 cents. It is texture foam, which I've never seen before. So I was thinking this might give me what I need. Watch me break a fingernail on this. Ah, it's not. But this is texture foam. Like I said, it's 99 cents. You can probably find it on... I'll go look and see if there's any on Amazon, because I hate to show you something that then you can't get. But I'm pretty sure there's texture foam somewhere on Amazon. I'll see if I can find a link for you. Alright, and it's, this one's dots, lines, there's two of them. Wavy, zigzag, tiny dots, and this kind of looks like a bamboo curtain wood. Okay. Now let's try. Let's have a bigger brush. Yeah, I do. Let's try the paint a little bit more liquidy. Maybe put some white in it. See, I'm using up my little tubes. Today. All right, let's, let's go over the dots that we only have one of and see what happens. Now this might be the texture for the cactus, let's see. All right, let's pull this up on a clean sheet. Well, maybe not. Maybe we'll just pull it up on an orange sheet. The time I make up my mind, it'll be dry. Oh, that would work. And by not rolling on the whole thing, I would, could be able to control how much of it I put down. Just ink up a little bit at a time. Well, look at that. That works right here. For the cactus texture. It'll be fun. Let's see if I can find something brighter. There we go. Let's try that weird bamboo texture and see how that looks. This one here. Yeah, I'm sure these sheets are available somewhere. It's just texture foam and I'm sure people probably use it when they're doing um, maybe uh, 
that Fimo clay. Well, I don't know if that one's going to show. Let's do it on its own sheet. Yeah, I'm, I've got some stencils that I'm working on cutting out, and I'll actually show you how I do it with one of them. Well, that's not very good. Let's try it from here. Oh, it's, it's a better texture when you do it straight from the... Look at that. That really is pretty. i got more room to do more on that one. Let's try one of the wavy line ones and see what we're going to get. Now let's try rolling over it. Oh, something dark. See if that's going to be better. And then putting it on the plate. See what we get with this one. Now I'm going to do a small section with the brush up there and see if that actually isn't better. Do the brush straight to the paper. Oh, they're both good. Look at that. That is a nice texture. But that way I can isolate the part of the cactus and um, texture just that, that area where the green will show. Let's do some more darks. Now this one, this might be the one for the cactus. I know I say that every time I do one, but we'll see. Good, just pressed on the sheet. Let's see how it looks on the uh, now. The paintbrush does give a different effect. I do like the effect I'm getting with the paintbrush. It's actually filling it in more because uh, it's not just running over the top of the design. It's actually in places filling in. When you press down with the foam, right? See what we got? See the difference? You're going to get splotches of dark. Whereas when I rolled over it, like here, you can see it only got the highlights. Where I painted over it, it got the highlights and then a little bit in between. So you get a different effect doing it that way. I really like that. Let's pull this up white or something. See if I can pull it up. Now when I looked, I had white all over the place. Now I can't find any. Pull it up with this white. This is always handy. But yeah, there's different ways to apply your paint. I think my two favorite ways so far today were applying it directly to the plate with a paintbrush. and uh, applying it to the painting directly onto the stamp and also
using the stamp directly on the paper instead of on the gel plate. You can get a nice combination. I just want to pull up some of this so we can clean it up a little. Well, not very much of it came off. Oh, but look how pretty that is. Yeah, I would have to let it sit out here and dry to get it all up. But that's some of it. There are lots of different ways you can apply. And I think this, I'll show you the different look you're going to get if you spread it all out there and then do it. Choose this one. And this one. And half of a doily. I think I'm done for now. I think I'm going to use those very small dots this on the cactus. I think that's the decision I've come up with. So that's going to be my cactus texture. And I think I might use the this because the cactus I'm doing is in a terracotta pot and I think this might look nice if I did this in oranges for um, the terracotta pot. Yeah, it's very hot out here today, so this stuff is sticking and then not wanting to come up. But you see the difference between, here's the dots here. See the difference? Actually, it's these dots right here. But see the difference between putting it down on the plate? The difference you can get with the same, I'll go zoom down here, with the same equipment doing it just a different way. You can see this is where I did the, the bigger dots. And this is where I did it directly onto the plate and pushed it in. So you see it's the same thing, but you're getting all kinds of different effects. The same with if I use this little cookie tin. I'd get a totally different effect, I'll show you, by putting paint on the surface here. Titanium white. And I'll use what's left of that orange, make a peach. Roll that out. And I'll show you, you can get a, you, you'll have a whole different effect by doing it that way. So I'm going to start working on those. I've got two stencils, three I think that I'm working on. I'm working on a, a picture a friend of mine got of a spoonbill flying over the bayou that I want to do a collage of. So I have to make the pinks for that this week because it is pink, pinker than I thought it was going to be. I always thought spoonbills were white, but I guess they're flamingo pink because that's what this one is. Hopefully they didn't dry too much. Either dries too much or not enough. You just can't win. And I'm done with this one. Just want to show you the difference. You can barely see the difference, but. You can see it right here. The difference that it made when I painted over it, you get a much more sort of graffiti looking look to it than you did here. And you can see if I do another pull, 
You see how nice and crisp it is there? You, you can figure out how that would go. But it's sort of like when you, you know, when you do it with the bottom of a cup as opposed to a nice stamp, you get more of a graffiti look to it, stamping it on like that. Anyhow, that's what I'm doing today. I think I found my technique for the cactus. So I'll do that. I'm going to pull this up with white, and at the end of the video, I'll have the picture of this too. So thank you very much for viewing my video. I hope you enjoy the different ways you can, different effects you can get with painting it on as opposed to just rolling it on. And sometimes you can just paint it onto the stamp and then just put it on the paper and not even, you know, bypass the gel plate. But see you, see how nice that would look for shrubbery and that? Beautiful. This one's not bad. This might have some of the pinks I need for the spoon bill. And that. And this is the one that was done on the plate, rolled on the plate. So thank you very much for viewing my video. You have a lovely day. Put a like if you like it. Subscribe if you want to see more. Hit the bell icon if you want to be notified. And you have a lovely, lovely day.